1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9. The Bible said, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the name of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it might not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. If you, if you know anything about Chronicles, when you, when you come to the first chapter of the book of Chronicles, it's all names. <laughs> and all these wonderful names, and Adam starts, and it gives kind of a line of Adam to Noah, and right on down all these wonderful names. And if you're like me, I just say Adam and pick it up over there when they all quit. And Adam and all of his friends, but uh, uh, sometimes when you do that, you miss out on something. And if you've done this and that, and as reading these first four or five chapters, if you've done that, just said the first word and realize it's all names, and just be honest with me, don't you hate to go through all them names? I guess that God thought it was important, He put it in the Bible. But I was thinking in the middle of all of these names, in the middle of all of these names, all of a sudden when He comes to Jabez, God just stopped. He stops. I don't know. I, I meant to count these names, but I don't know. There's probably at least a hundred names here or more that's mentioned in these uh, two or three chapters. And all of a sudden, God stops when it comes to chapter 4 and verse 9, and He says two verses about Jabez. He didn't say nothing about nobody else in here. He passed them all up, gave their name, made no comments about it. But when He come to Jabez, He said Jabez was more honorable than his brother. In other words, he said of all these names and all these people, that Jabez was more honorable. And it tells about a prayer that Jabez prayed. Some people call it the prayer of Jabez, whatever. But he said, Jabez, calling on the God of Israel. And here's what he said, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, large my coast, thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me, I like this last statement, and God granted him that which he requested. And I think of all the things and all the names that's mentioned here in the Word of God, God had some great things to buy. And Jabez is seeking something. Jabez is wanting more than he had. He, he's wanting more than he knows. He's wanting to know more. He's wanting a more personal relationship with God. He's wanting more involvement in the things of God and Jabez is praying that prayer and Jabez has got uh, I guess you could call it a, an appetite for more than he's got and I want to talk just for a few minutes on having a spiritual appetite having a spiritual appetite I think about here in the word appetite it just means a desire for something it talks about, it means to crave something, to strive after something. And here as you read these verses, you can't help from realize that Jabez is crying out to God for something. He's craving something. He's craving the power of God. He's craving the involvement of God. He's craving more. He, he's kind of he's tired of the norm. <laughs> He's kind of tired of what's going on or maybe where he's at. And I think about it in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. He said, Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Makes me wonder how, how thirsty we really are for the spiritual things of God. Amen. You know, sometimes we have a, it's easy to have an appetite for worldly things. Amen. It's easy to have an appetite for television. Amen. I'm not just preaching about television, but you know, you don't, uh, really and truly, you don't have no problem watching TV. Amen? You just turned on and watch it. <laughs> sure do have problems reading your Bible, don't you? Amen? You don't have no trouble being faithful to work. Sometimes we have trouble being faithful to church. Come on now, help me out. I'm not being ugly. I'm just telling you, my friend. But, you know, sometimes we have, uh, we have an appetite for the flesh. We have appetite for the things of the flesh, the entertainment of the flesh. It's so easy. But when it comes to spiritual things sometimes, it seems like it's just hard to really have and hold on and maintain to that spiritual appetite. And if you read Jabez, he's not asking for nothing carnal, Brother Bobby. He's not asking for nothing fleshly. Everything that he's asking for is spiritual. Everything he's asking for is godly. 
Everything he wants is more of God. Everything he's hungry for is the things of God and the work of God. And sometimes we fail just having a real spiritual appetite for the things of God. Amen? We just become so content. As in Romans, you remember what the Romans said. It talks about the flesh and the spirit lusting against each other. Well, you're still in this flesh. When you got saved, you did not get this flesh saved. This flesh is just as stinking sorry and sinful as it ever has was. But the inner man, the soul, is what God saved. And ever since you got saved, and you know this, there's a warfare that goes on. The spirit and the flesh is fighting one against another. The flesh still has an appetite for the world. The flesh still has an appetite for sin. The flesh still has the things of appetite for carnal. But the, the inner man, the inner man, it has a, has a desire and an appetite for the things of God. Amen? And you say, which one wins, preacher? One you feed the most. Amen? You sow the flesh, you shall of the flesh reap corruption. You sow the spirit, you shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Ain't it amazing how, how much and, and y'all going to think I'm being ugly, but I'm not. Ain't it amazing how much plans and how much effort and how much of my friend's strength and money we put into doing fleshly things. <laughs> Come on now, help me out. And how little we put in to doing spiritual things. Amen? Come on, come on. Hey, we don't want to give to God's work, but we'll make sure that kid's got the, the most expensive ball bat there is. <laughs> Amen? We'll make sure he don't miss a game. Amen? Come on, I'm not against ball. Come on, don't help me out, huh? But we make sure all this stuff, all the worldly things, we make sure we get there. We make sure every new movie comes out, we got to see it. Everything new on TV, we got to see it. Every new fashion that comes out, we got to have it. And we work toward that, and we put effort toward that. But when it comes to the spiritual things, I wonder how why we're so weak in gaining the spiritual things of God. Amen. I wonder if we really do have an appetite for the spiritual things of God. And Jabez had that appetite. I thought about, I thought about some different appetites in the Bible. I thought about, my friend, uh, uh, different ones. You know, there's some people that has there's no appetite. I'm talking about just normally. Some people just lose it. I read a story the other day in a book. It told about this woman had health problems. And said she went to some foreign country where they had all this medicine and they had all these, these uh, plants and all this food and uh, health food and all that. And they were surrounded by all that stuff. And she, and she died over there. Before she died, she wrote a letter. She said, I came over here sick. I come over here needing help. And said, I was right in the midst of the greatest healing food that there was. I'm great in the midst of the, of the town that supplies all the healing food and all the necessity. But she said, I'm going to die because I don't have no appetite. You know, sometimes we're right in the midst of everything God's got for us. God's wanting to give us everything in the world. God's wanting to bless us. God's wanting to help us grow. God's wanting to supply our needs. God's wanting to answer our prayers. But my friend, we're going to die spiritually because we don't have no appetite for the spiritual things of God. That's why a lot of people ain't here tonight. They don't have no spiritual appetite for the things of God. Amen. Come on now, help me out. We'll sit in the stadiums and watch a ball game pouring rain, but we won't come to church sitting in the dry. Amen. Come on now, help me out. Huh? I'm talking about I'm talking about people have no appetite for the things of God. They have no hunger for the things of God. That's why they don't read their Bible. That's why they don't pray. That's why they don't enjoy the things of God. They have no appetite for those things, my friend. And so you know what? They are carnal and they die spiritually. And that's why a lot of them fall out of the ranks a little time because they have no appetite for the things of God. You say, how can you know that, preacher? When you go all week and don't read your Bible, you pretty well don't have no appetite for the things of God. Amen? <laughs> when you go all week and you don't even breathe a prayer to God, you have no appetite for the things of God. Amen? Then I thought about, I thought about there's the wrong appetite. <laughs> and this is hard to preach this because I'm a diabetic and I crave every bowl of ice cream in between here and Texas. Amen? <laughs> And candy bars and cake and everything else. Yeah, things that hurt you. Things you're not supposed to. Ain't amazing, Slick. I mean, the very thing that hurts you is the thing you want the most. Amen? Uh, you, you think about that. You know, you don't think about it. All of a sudden, they walk in and say, you're diabetic. You can't have no sugar. And your body just says, sugar, sugar, sugar. It just starts taking off, wanting everything. You know what? And you know what? We have a tendency. We have a tendency to just go ahead and have a wrong appetite. Eat things that's going to hurt us. Do things that's going to cause us problems and cause us heart. That's called the wrong appetite. You ever had a doctor look at you, you know, and you say, well, I've been having this problem, that problem. He, you know, he look at you like, duh. 
You know, I told you not to eat that stuff. I told you not to do that. I told you that would hurt you. I told you it wouldn't help you. But you know what? Sometimes we're in that way. We have the wrong appetite. The things that hurt us, it seems like we crave that more than the things that's going to help us. Then I thought about I thought about a good appetite. Boy, ain't it good? <laughs> ain't it good when you're having a good appetite? I don't think I've ever had a bad appetite. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I mean, you can tell looking at me. Hello, Brother Bobby. I don't think I've ever had a bad appetite. I've always been able to eat. And, you know, a good appetite. You know, our mother used to tell us, you know, eat, you're going to get sick. You ever had your mama tell you that? Eat, you're going to get sick. And, you know, back to the old timers now, you know what the old timers used to do? They fixed the plate for you. Blessed the day when I could fix my own plate. Because mama put everything on there and you had to eat it before you could get up. Amen. Eat it, then you can go to bed. Eat it, then you can go do something else. And my friend, and they say, it is good for you. Yeah. And you know what? I found out. I found out in in days in my boys' days. I don't know about yours, but I found my my wife. She'd poke. She put uh, turnip greens down them kids. She put broccoli down them kids. She eat everything. Everything. Every time they open mouth, she's like poking something down them kids and getting. And you know what? Now they eat everything. Now we don't put forth the effort, and we feed pizza rolls to our kids, and they grow up on pizza rolls. They don't learn about green beans. They don't learn about taters. Come on now, help me out, huh? And we wonder why they're so sick all the time. They're so anemic all the time because you didn't feed them right, huh? And boy, good appetites when you're just hungry and you eat, amen? Boy, I tell you you, you, you pass up the things that's bad and you just eat the things that's good for you. I think about, I think about a poor appetite, which is a weak appetite. You know, if you have a poor appetite, it causes you to get weak. And on and on and on we could go about all that. But I thought about, I thought about, I got to get her up. I thought about some, some, some appetites in the Word of God. You remember when David was in that cave over there? And my friend David said, oh, that I had a drink of the water from the wells of Bethlehem. David had a desire. He said, boy, I'd like to go back. I can't. I'd like to go back and just get a drink of the wells of Bethlehem. And you remember those three soldiers broke through the enemy, got them some water, and fought their way back, gave it to David. And David poured it out before the Lord. My friend wouldn't even drink it because of the sacrifice. But he had an appetite. He, had a, he said, I've tasted, I've tasted that water back under, and I'd like to have some more. Well, I'll tell you what, my friend, ain't it? sometimes I, when Brother Bobby was talking about coming up the road, I said, Brother Bobby, I said, you remember 35, 40 years ago, some of them old-time meetings we used to have? Brother Bobby traveled with me for about a year. I guess Brother Bobby traveled with me about a year back when he was trying to get, he a mix, uh, missionary, and he was trying to raise support, and he traveled with me about a year, and I'd get him places to preach, and we tried to help each other. And you know what? My friend, we'd go to them meetings, and man, God would show up and bless that. And my friend, I'd I tell him sometime, I said, boy, I'd like to go back. I, I get a hunger sometimes just to go back and be in one of them old-time meetings like we used to have where it broke out and people got saved and got right. I mean, talk about really got right. And, and people changed, and the church change. David said, I've got an appetite. I want to taste that again. And there's some things I like to taste again. I said, but you've got to have a spiritual appetite to get to that place. I thought about I thought about Daniel. Daniel had an appetite when everybody else was doing wrong. David purposed it. Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defy himself with the king's meat. He desired only that that God would have for him. Well, wouldn't it be good if we just desired only what God had for us. Amen. Then I thought about, I thought about the wise men in Matthew chapter number 2. You know, let me say this. You ever think about the wise men? The wise men came over there. And I know we have the wise men in every Christmas program, but they ain't in the Christmas program. They never did go to the manger. They was, if you read that, it says they, said they went to his house. He's probably two years old at the time the wise men got there. And, and what the, the Bible says in chapter 2, in the first part, they came seeking him. He said, where is he that we might find him? We want to worship him. We've been seeking him. We've come from afar. You know what? They had an appetite, Brother Bobby, to see the Savior. They had an appetite to worship him. And they said, well, you go find him. He said, when you find him, come back and let us know. And they went, all right, watch this. The Bible said when they finally found him and the star, Brother Bobby, stood over their house and they went into that house, Brother Slick. You know what the Bible said? When they saw him... They fell down and worshipped him. They brought him gold, uh, frankincense, and myrrh, and gave it to him. But the Bible said they fell. When they saw him, they fell and worshipped him. You ever think about this? Jesus wasn't but two years old. <laughs> he had never opened nobody's blinded eyes. He had never supplied nobody's needs. He had never walked on the water. 
He never performed any kind of miracle, but they worship him. And sometimes all we want to worship is what he's done for us. I love him because he supplied my needs. I love him because he healed me. I love him. But I'll tell you, they were not interested in what he'd done or hadn't done. They worshiped him. We need a spiritual appetite, not for what he's done, but because of who he is. They worshiped him. They had a desire. They had an appetite just to worship him, just to see him. <laughs> Amen. Then I thought about Paul, and you could talk about him for a while. But Paul says, uh, 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 all these things, none of these things move me. He said, and he said, all this falls out for the force of the gospel, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. All through the Bible, you can find people that had a spiritual appetite for God. Well, Jabez here, he's got a spiritual appetite for God. First of all, I want to say, uh, he had an appetite for personal blessings. He said, oh, that thou would bless me indeed. He had a hunger to be blessed from God. I don't, I don't think it necessarily meant let him win the lottery. <laughs> I, don't never, I don't think necessarily meant, Brother Bobby, uh, let, me win, let me have a new car or this or that. I think he just wanted, Lord, if you want to bless And he, in fact, he tells me, he tells you, Lord, bless me indeed. Enlarge my coast. He said, Lord, if you want to bless me, give me more to do. Give me more to get involved in. <laughs> you ever prayed that prayer? Lord, I ain't doing enough. Give me more. <laughs> Come on now, help me out. Huh? Oh, he says in that verse, Jabez wanted the best God could give him. He was, he was tired of just the norm. He was tired of just going through the motion. He was tired. Not necessarily he didn't appreciate what blessings God had, but he wanted more. You know what? Sometimes all we can talk about is the past blessings of God. I don't know about you. I kind of like those present blessings of God that come through. Ain't nothing wrong with the past ones, but I'll tell you what, I sure like them new ones. <laughs> Amen. I was sitting in, I was standing by with Bobby coming up the road. I was sitting there, I sat at the house the other night, and Kay, about 11 o'clock, Kay went on the bed, and I said, well, I'm going to stay up. I said, I, I study a lot late at night, and I said, I'm going to stay up a while, read a while, and everything is for some. And I was sitting there, and it seemed like, seemed like I was just dead, you know, just dry. I don't know if you ever felt that way. It just seemed like I was just there. And, and I turned the TV on, and, and, and the, the cathedral quartet come on. Okay, what did you think about them or not? They came on. And I said, well, I'll just listen to them a minute. And the old original, the, uh, they had a 30-minute uh, thing of the cathedral. And it's 11 30 at night, and that thing come on, man. Next thing I know, brother, I was in the glory world. Eh? Man, I mean, them old boys are singing. I got, I like to got raptured out, brother Slick. Eh? And my wife hollered, What in the world are you watching? Eh? I said, I'm watching Cathedral, and I'm about to leave here. Eh? You know what? It seemed like God just took a funnel down eh? and began to fill up my soul. Eh? I wasn't thinking about past blessings, eh? I wasn't thinking about what God's going to do tomorrow. I was just so wrapped up in what He was doing right then. Eh? I just couldn't contain it. That's what J. Bass said. He said, God, I know what you can do in the future. I know what you've done in the past. But God, right now, right now, when it's thou not, bless me indeed. I want something now. Amen. He wanted, hey, listen, he was over being self-sufficient. He was over being self-satisfied. He, Jabez had an appetite for the things of God. He made an appeal for it. He said, oh, that towel would have blessed me indeed. He didn't ask the preacher. He didn't ask no man. He's asking God. Amen. You know what? Man cannot supply what you need anyway. God can. <laughs> Amen. Hey, listen, he's appealing for it. He said, oh, Lord, will you bless me? You know, James said, you have not cause you ask not. There's no telling what would happen if we get a real appetite for God. You know, most times if you get hungry for something, you're pretty well going to get it. You ever get, get your mind on something? On a certain thing? Come on now, help me out. I ain't the only one that eats. You ever get your mind on something, you know? I got my mind on, I'm not a big steak eater. But I got my mind on steak a while back. I thought, man, I'm, I'd like to have a good steak. And, uh, and I told my wife, I said, I'd like to have a good steak. And she said, well, I done got this stuff laid out and everything's going to fix it. And I said, that's fine. I just still like to have a good steak. Well, the next day, I told her, I said, you know what? I'd like to have a good steak. About the third day, I told her, I said, I got up that morning. I said, don't cook nothing. I'm going to get a steak. If you want to go, you can. If you, go, if you don't want to go, that's fine. I'm going to get one, and I'm going to get satisfied because I want one. 
We went over and got a steak, and I left uh, happy. You know what? I had a crave. I wanted it. You know what? I got it. <laughs> How long has it been since you had a, sep- a spiritual appetite for some things of God, and you just stayed with it until you got it? You just stayed on your knees. You stayed in the throne room. You stayed in the book. Uh, my friend, you stayed talking and fellowship with Him until you got and God satisfied that craving and the desire that you had in your heart. Uh, until Jabez said, uh, he asked God, Oh God, will you send it? He said, Lord, uh, I, I've received many blessings, but Lord, I'm not content. I want more. I want more. I want more. Oh God, will thou not bless me indeed? I wonder what would happen if we went in this revival. With that kind of prayer. Oh God, wilt thou not bless me Sunday morning when this thing kicks off down through Friday night? And God, will you not bless me indeed and have a hunger for something for God and not be satisfied until you get it? In fact, in fact, all Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 64, if you remember what Isaiah said, he said in Isaiah 64 verse 1, Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down, and the mountains might flow down at thy presence. And when the mountain burning, uh, uh, melting fire burneth, causes the water to boil to make thy name known. In other words, he said, Oh, Lord, won't you come down from heaven and meet us here on earth? We need you. We need you. That's kind of what Jabez says. He makes an appeal. He has an appetite for some personal blessings. You know, sometimes we think, boy, boy, they really got blessed. I like for people to get blessed, but sometimes I won't get blessed. Amen. You ever think about going to the table and eating? Probably ain't nobody ever done this. You ever went to the table eating? Everybody's eating. You ain't eating. Uh, you ever get mad? Say, so ain't eating. I've done that a time or two back in the day. The boy was home. Get aggravated. I said, hey, fool, I ain't eating nothing. And Kate hollered, supper's ready. The boys would run over you getting to the table. I'm mad. I ain't eating nothing. I just tell them myself. I'm sitting there in the living room. You, you know what? They're in there eating. I don't care how mad I get. Them boys are going to eat. Kate's eating. And the boys said, come on in here, Daddy. He said, it's good. I ain't eating. You know who wants to be in there all the time? Me. You know who's the hunger? They can't stand it? Me. You know who's going to miss out? Me. And sometimes we worry about everybody else. I tell you, Jabez wasn't worried about nobody. He wanted a move and a touch it and a hunger and a spiritual movement of God in his own heart, in his own life. I wonder, do you really want, do you really want a spiritual touch and a movement in your heart in this coming revival that we have? This is a revival that you could have something that satisfies your heart and your soul. Can't worry about that. Boy, they ain't here. I'm sorry they missed it. Amen. They're not here. I tell you, you ought to be worried. J. Bass said, I want a personal. He had a personal craving. Do you personally crave something? It's good that Brother Doug, we got a wonderful pastor, and I love Brother Doug, and, and, uh, and uh, uh, I, I hold it. Somebody said, uh, Slick, I guess it was. He said, you mean you drove all the way up here just to preach on Wednesday night and you got to go to Florida tomorrow night? He said, why'd you do that? I said, because the pastor asked me to. He didn't really ask me. He told me. Amen. He said, you know, he did ask me. But I said, he asked. And I said, I'm not going to turn him down. He's my pastor. If he needs me, I'm here. But you know what? My friend, sometimes we worry about everybody else instead of worrying about ourselves and asking God to help us do what we can. God, give me what I need. In this revival meeting, you ought to just push aside everybody else and say, God, I need, I need. Will thou bless me? And then, then I thought about this. Not only did he, not only have an appetite for personal blessing, but, but he had a prayer for personal extension. You see what he's talking about? Look at it. He said, Oh, Lord, wilt thou bless me indeed? He said, Enlarge my coast. Well, that's a tough prayer to pray. What he says is, Give me more to do. Get me involved, more involved. Help me to read more than one chapter. Help me to pray more than 30 minutes. Give me a longer, greater prayer life. I know it ain't in the length, but you know what I'm saying. Give me a greater, more extensive prayer life. Give me a greater, more uh, 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 opportunity to give. Give me more uh, work to do. Help me to work with the young folks. Help me to work with the old folks. Help me to get involved. Help me to sing, labor. God, give me more. Enlarge my coast. Get me more involved. 
Seems like we're living in a day today where people's trying to get uninvolved. And people don't want to get involved. In fact, most churches, they say, if you've got 100 people, there's about 10 to 15 carries the load. If you've got 1,000 people, there's probably 100 people carries the load. You ever think, you ever ask God, Lord, help me not just to be a bench warmer? Come in and find my bench and sit down. I forgot about y'all over there. I pressed y'all a little bit. Y'all need to be over here so I can see y'all. Amen. But you ever think about that? You ever ask God? I'm just being honest with you. You ever think, God help me. I come in here and sit on this same pew every Sunday. Help me more than, help me to be more than just a, a, a second seat bench warmer. Help me go to the choir. Amen. Y'all all, may y'all sing in the choir. I don't know. Help me to be a choir member. Help me to be a Sunday school teacher. Help me to be a shouter. <laughs> Help me to be more involved in the book. Help me more, be more involved in prayer. Help me, Lord, to take the prayer requests around here more serious and write them down and take them home and pray for them. God, give me a bigger prayer life in our church. Give me a bigger Bible life in my church. Give me a bigger uh, uh, supporter. Help me to uh, make something on the side that I can give more. I'm telling you, he said, Lord, if you want to bless me, that had been most of us, he said, Lord, if you want to bless me, give me a raise. <laughs> give me a better job. Pay my house off. Jabez said, Lord, if you want to bless me indeed. That word indeed said, Lord, if you really want to bless me, enlarge my cost. Huh? If you really come in this revival praying, God, I want you to bless me, and Lord, you can bless me by enlarging my coast. And you prayed that prayer all through the revival this week, all through the Sunday, and all through next week. I wonder what God would have you doing at the next week. <laughs> I wonder what God might open up for you the next week. Amen. That's what he said. He, Jabez wanted a wider scope. He felt, he felt he was limited in opportunities and he wanted more opportunity. He, he felt that there was lost opportunities that he would like to regain. He felt that there was larger opportunities out there that he could reach and get involved in. Amen. There's a lot of things that's going through my mind in the last couple of months. And I preach all the time and and I, I, I just started 58 years and I preach all the time and that's wonderful and I love it wouldn't have nothing else to do it but you know what in my mind uh, Brother James this thing's been a clicking in my mind I got all kinds of I thought about these devotions that we do I got a lady said preacher if you want to said I'll help you I'll help you type all that and we'll print like 15 at a piece and make little booklets out of it you know man my mind was a clicking and, and, and you can do this another guy comes and said preacher if you'd like to be invited we, we could do this and do that and I'm just sitting in my mind I'm sitting there thinking Lord I've been praying this prayer and now here I'm preaching and busy all the time and now all these other opportunities just opened up and I said God help me to find a time to get this done and get, get the gospel out any way I can. You say, preacher, you know, what are you saying? I said, you better be careful when you pray. Enlarge my coast. He might just do it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. He might just work in your direction and get you busy. You might not have th time for the things of the world. You might not have, to have time for the things of recreation and all that. You'd be so involved in the things of you say, what's important about that? Because all that other is going to pass away. What you do for God is going to last and stand. Yeah. Amen. Then I say, listen, j -Bad felt there was opportunities that he never had. He's opportunities, my friend. You know, there's opportunities to study this Bible. That's, uh, you know, I, I heard a preacher preach the other day was in a count meeting. I was telling Brother Bobby, come back. This, this guy's not a preacher, count meeting preacher. As far as I know, he probably ain't never preached in a count meeting in his life. He rode down to Georgia with me in this count meeting. And he said, he said, uh, he said, I've never uh, been involved in the count meeting and like this and everything. Well, they preach off the floor like we do here when we have our meeting. And you know what? Uh, like we went, we went uh, Friday and Saturday all day, Friday all day, Saturday, and came Sunday morning. And the pastor come around and this guy that was with me, he said, he said, Brother Gutson, he said, is this a good feller? I said, if he wasn't, I wouldn't have him down here. He said, can he preach? I said, God called him to preach. I said, he's the one I told you about one time. Every morning for 20 years, he read the Bible, sitting in a chair on the side of the road in Greenback, Tennessee for 20 years. He sat and read the Bible through. I said, he's read the Bible through. You know what? He got up and preached, and one of his first points was, he said, I don't say, my first point is, have you ever read every word in this Bible? It's like a holy hush come over that place. <laughs> Amen. You know, that'd be a good thing, Lord. If you want to bless me, 
Help me to get involved in this Bible so much. I've read every word. <laughs> Amen. I'm talking about he felt like there was opportunities that he had lost that he, he wanted to gain back. Then I said something about he pleaded for personal direction. Look at it. He said, Oh Lord, wilt thou bless me indeed, enlarge my coast, that thy hand, thy hand might be with me. You know what he's saying is? He said, Lord, I want you. I want your divine guidance. That your hand, it's kind of like, it's kind of like taking a kid by hand. You know, you go to the park or go somewhere, and you take that kid by the hand. And you know what? You're leading, you're guiding that kid through whatever. I remember we went to one of them spook places. I don't like them. Vietnam comes on me. I want to kill everyone of them in there. I told him, I said, I ain't going through there. Y'all can go through if you want to. I said, I'll kill half of them before we get out of there. I, I can't handle it, James. I just, that's just me. I just I got all this military stuff. And, and, and my granddaughter, my granddaughter, she told me. She said, Papa, I want you to go with me. And I got her by the head. I'm trying to lead her. <laughs> She's leading me. But I, said, I don't want, you know, I don't want to go. But you know what? She, you know what? She looked up. She said, Papa, it's okay. I got you by the head. And I've been here through here before. Boy, the good day, as I said, God, I want you. You've done been through everything and all. Just get me by the hand, God. You've been through it before. You lead me. You guide me. You take me through. And I'll tell you, that's what Jabez has said. He said, Lord, I want you to guide me. I want you to lead me in the direction you want me to go. I want you to lead me toward the will of God for my life. I want you to will of God. I want you to lead me where I need to be. I want you to lead me in what I want, what you want me to do more. And that large coast, Lord, take me by the hand. Hold on to me and be with me. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lead not to thine own understanding. All thy ways and knowledge him. And what? He will direct your path. Over in, in the book of uh, Psalms chapter 25, he said, Show me thy ways. Teach me thy paths. The psalmist is saying, God, take me by the hand. You lead me. You guide me. You show me. Boy, you know, it's, it's wonderful when God... When you're praying for blessings, you're praying for direction, you're praying for the will of God, you're praying for God to enlarge your coast, you're praying for God to bless you indeed, you're praying for God to help you to grow, you're praying for God to help you to become more strength and have more stability in your life and be more spirit-filled, and God takes you by the hand and leads you through. Amen. <laughs> Brings you through those things. That's what Jabez is praying for. Jabez wanted to know the will of God for his life. Can I ask you a question? Do you really know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, what the will of God is for your life? Half people ask me all the time. I had a fellow ask me yesterday on the phone. He called me. Dear friend of mine, he's got some health issues, and we've been trying to stay in contact with him. And, and he called me, and he said, Brother Michael, are you busy? And I said, yeah, I've been busy. I was in Knoxville last week, and, and I said, I'm, I'm headed to Kentucky, and then I'm going to Florida. And I said, next week I'm going to, I'll be in uh, Knoxville again, and in a meeting, and then I said, I got to fly out on Wednesday to a, to a military thing, and then I said, I'll be back on Thursday, and, and all this stuff. And, and he said, I, he said, Brother Mike, how in the world do you do all that stuff? And you know, my all was the same answer it's just the will of God. <laughs> if it wasn't the will of God, I couldn't do it. The will of God, I couldn't make it. Amen. I had a preacher, Brother Bobby Cato, called me the other day, and he's talking to me, and he said, Brother Mike, he said, you know what the difference between me and you is? I said, what? Because I know a lot of difference between me and him. But anyway, I said, what? He said, I've got the will of God to pastor. I couldn't run up the roads down like you do. But you've got the gift of evangelists. And that's why God can run you up down the road and it don't bother you. You know why? It's the difference in the will of God. But you actually say, I know what the will of God is in my life. That's what Jabez is seeking. Lord, I want to do everything. I want to be involved in the will of God so much in my life that I won't miss nothing you want me to do. I don't want to miss nothing that you want me to get involved in. I don't want to miss a study in this Bible that you want me to have. I don't want to miss a prayer time that you want me to be in. Jabez is entered. He's praying and asking God to direct him in the will of God. And he wants to do the work of God. And he wanted more than just to know. He wanted action in his life. You know, sometimes we think, sometimes we think that because uh, we ain't committed adultery, we're okay. 
You know, that is a sin. Oh, we ain't got drunk. Uh, uh, we're okay. We ain't beat nobody up. Ain't beat our wife up. Wife ain't beat us up. We ain't cussed nobody up. <laughs> ain't smoking no dope. We're okay. Well, what about that scripture? Where is it in James or Jude? Where it said, Therefore him knoweth do good. And doeth it not. <laughs> to him it's saying. You know, sometimes it ain't the bad things we're leaving undone. It's the good things that we're leaving undone. The good things that we're not doing. The faithfulness that we don't have. The, the, the Bible reading we don't have. The prayer that we don't have. The giving. The involvement that we don't have. I remember I had a boy who got saved when I was a pastor in Greenville, Tennessee, back in the 70s. Had a young man got saved. And boy, he, I mean, he really got saved. <laughs> and, I got, and I had to be careful. I'd get up on Sunday night and I'd say, I'd say, now, uh, I say, well, y'all pray for Wednesday night service and everything, pray and come be here Wednesday. You know what? Every Sunday, every Sunday, Sunday night, he'd come up there every Sunday. Preacher, what do you want me to do this week? I had to make up stuff. I wasn't going to turn him down with nobody else volunteering. He said, Preacher, what can I do this week? Anybody I need to go see? What can I do? Huh? Do, I, do I need to clean the church? Do I need to make a visit? What can I do, Preacher. I'm going to do something for the Lord. I've done so much for the devil. I'm going to do something for it. Every Sunday, he'd meet me up there. I told you this before. One Sunday night, I couldn't come up with nothing else with a Christian. I said, I'll tell you what you do. Bill, over in the morning about 7 o'clock and wash the preacher's car. And I said, while you wash his car, I'll try to think of something for you to do. I was just acting crazy. Next morning, 7 o'clock, I heard him out there. He's a washing my car. 7 o'clock in the morning. I said, like, what are you doing? He said, preacher, you told me to wash your car until you found me something to do for God. Huh? I thought, man, God, give me a house full of that crowd. <laughs> Amen. He said, put you're crazy. No, I'm telling you, this boy, he didn't just want to know. He wanted to put forth an half effort to do that. You know, sometimes when you pray for the will of God, also you need to pray, God, give me the strength and ability and the knowledge to do these things. Amen. And then let me say, let me close. Not only did he have a plea for personal direction, but he had an appeal for personal protection. He says, Lord, wilt thou bless me indeed? And large my coast. My hand might be with me that thou wouldest keep me from evil. He said that thou mightest keep me from evil that it may not grieve me. He's praying for the protection of God. J. Bear is aware of sinful flesh. He's aware of a sinful foe out there, the devil, and the world that's against him. He said, God, would you not protect me? Please don't let my old sinful flesh rise over this spiritual desire that I have help me Lord to not let the world and the force of hell and the devil come in and steal this craving this appetite I've got for the things of God and wanting more help me God protect me from that God give me that power you know what the Bible said greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world and you pray that prayer you better be willing to let the Holy yield yourself to the Holy Ghost let the Holy Ghost guide you and teach you and then fill you and work and heart in your heart. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, what a man. What a man in this chapter. What a prayer. <laughs> what a godly opinion. God made this opinion. God said, there's, there's all of these names. There's not a one of them more honorable than Jabez. And all he said was, Lord, bless me indeed. Enlarge my God. Guide me, lead me in the direction. Let me ask you a question. What do you really want in your life? What do you really want in your Christian life? What do you want out of this revival? I, I, I'm trying to be respectful. I love both these preachers. I know both of them. Do you want Brother Corn to come over here and just preach and take off preaching? And you know how wild he is. He preaches, and I, I'm not, I'm not saying against it. I like wild preaching, but he's wild. He preaches, you know, and go and we'll walk out the door and say, "Boy, a good preacher, a good message." Brother Big McNeese comes now. Brother Doug, y'all don't know this. Brother Doug's got completely opposites. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night, he go woo, -hoo! and Brother Dean's gonna stand here, lay it out, <laughs> cut your heart. I know him. For about an hour and a half, he's going to let here flare her out. You'll leave him and say, good Lord, an hour and a half? If you really have an appetite for God, you don't care how long dinner lasts. <laughs> Amen? If you complain over time, you probably need a spiritual appetite. We go to ball games, we hope it breaks out and goes another inning. We go to church, I hope it don't preach long. 
I can sing 45 minutes, but don't preach over 20. What do you really want out of this revival? More than just a preacher preaching, good preaching. More than good, a good family that's going to come sing. You know what? If you ain't careful, if you ain't careful, and Brother Doug told me to come over and talk to you, and that's, that's what I'm trying to do. If you ain't careful, you don't know what will happen next week. You'll come in here and excuse this illustration, but you'll be got like going to the movies. You'll come in, find your seat, sit down. Turn the movie on. Let's watch the show. If you ain't careful, you'll come in here. Turn the singers loose and we'll watch the singer. Turn the preacher loose. We'll watch the preacher. And we'll quiet the door. Huh? What are you going to put in it? What do you want out of it? When Brother, when brother Cody stands up here and preaches, you ought to be looking, Lord, there's something in this message. It's mine. Help me not to miss it. Help me to get it. And Brother Dean McNeese preaches and lays out his truths. You ought to be saying, God, there's something in here for me. There's something in here that's going to help me. Something in here I need. God, help me not to miss it. And come in here with a hunger and a thirst for something for God. You ought to be praying, God, next week, we've had a revival after revival after revival. But next week, God, may this revival be different. Change my life. Don't just change my hearing. <coughs> change my life. When next week's over, Lord, help me to be more involved. Help me to have a more hunger than I've ever had. Help me to desire more. Get more involved than I've ever had. That could happen this week. You could become, you could become an ex beach warmer and a fresh involver. Huh? It's just up to you, whatever you want. It's kind of like going to a buffet. I'm not a big buffet eater. I don't like everybody up there messing around with my food. And I'm just not a big buffet eater. I'm just not. I mean, I go, but I don't, I'm not, I'm not, that's not a thrilling place for me. But it's like buffet, you know. There's just all kinds of stuff in there you can get. Some you don't like, some you don't need. But there's something in there you can find. I go all the time, preachers, you know, they say, Brother Mike, what are you? Brother Doug's worse, worse. He says, Brother Mike, what do you want to eat? I say, I don't care. He say, you stay out all the time. I say, well, I don't care. Wherever you want to go. You know what my attitude is toward going out and eat? If y'all ask me to go out and eat. You know what I'd say? You say, where you want to go, preacher? I'd say, anywhere you want to go. You know what my thought is? I can find something. They'll have something on that menu I can find. Amen. Some people say, well, I ain't going because they're going to eat over there. Well, be a little prune if you want to. Miss out on fellowship if you want to. Miss out on a free meal if you want to. But you can go and find something. And I'll tell you, every time you come in that door, God's got something for you. Maybe through a song, testimony, through the message, God's got something. If you come with an appetite, You'll find it. Amen. What do you want? Do you want anything? What do you need changed in your life? Are you content where you are? Are you content what you know? Are you content what you're doing? Won't you be like Jamez? Oh, God. Wilt thou not bless me indeed? And God said, How hey, you want me to bless you, Jabez? Just give me more to do, Lord. <laughs> Just increase my coast. Amen. Give me more. Amen. Let's stand. I'm through. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.